I'm more likely to die in the UK or America because of the color of my skin. I don't think Ghana is for everybody. There is a lot of pros, a lot of cons. Um, I think we really romanticize. Hello, my good people, and of course, this is your brother Fred from Africa. And guys, if you're watching for the first time, I request that you just subscribe, comment, and share. It's a humble request. And I uh, also appreciate you so much for always making part of this YouTube channel. We really one team, we really want one, uh, one family. And I thank you so much, okay? So, you know, the main purpose of us being in this YouTube channel is because of... Uh, of uh, bridging the gap between the Afghan descent. Still on the issue of returning home, let's go to Ghana. The Year of Return is an initiative that began in 2019. Ghana has been calling on Africans in the diaspora to return home. That's why we work around the clock. Just imagine right now it's, it is uh, 4 a.m. in the morning, okay? I can't sleep. Okay, I can't just sleep because when I remember the struggle that we still have to go through to be free, okay, I can't sleep because I will still have a long journey as the people of the black descent. That's why when I remember that our family or the black descent, some black people are in another continent, not as per their will, but as per the will of another group who wanted to do benefit from them, it actually pains us and it's, it actually pains me a lot. We need to always meet and uh, discuss these issues and at least come up with a, with a solution on how we can bridge this gap and be close to one another. We have to wake up very early in the morning, do our research, find a topic that we can talk about. So today, guys, I came across this you, this video here in the TikTok that I want us to discuss. It's about the African Americans who leave America to Africa and later regret why they left America to Africa. Okay, and also a look at reasons as to why the black people are facing discriminations in UK and in United States of America. So guys, if you're watching me for the first time, this is the best channel for you and I request that do not hesitate, subscribe because this is your channel, okay? We're just here as hosts, but this is your channel and we are here, to, we are free to discuss talk about the African culture, the African descent, the African people as a whole. Okay? So guys, let me play this clip, then come back and start discussing. I'm more likely to die in the UK or America because of the color of my skin. Mm. I can go to UK today mm. with nothing, mm. with nothing, just my t-shirt, my jeans, and my sneakers. Mm. I'll live there for one year. Mm. When you see me, you won't recognize me. I dare any Britain person, I dare them, any person born of England, US to live their whole life, nothing, come to Ghana with empty pocket and see what you go through. I came to Ghana with 8,000 pounds, bro. And my money got chopped. I had nothing. And I was living in a tent for 12 months with my children. Literally nothing at all. My wealth is a legacy. My wealth is bringing my children here on a plane when their ancestors left in shackles on a boat. See, we as Africans, we don't make money here. We make the money there, come and spend it here. And when we die, we are buried here. That, that is what we use African for. Whether you believe it or not, mm -hmm. that is the reality. Yo, you get buried here, but you won't come back here when you have the money. I know the Ghanaians in the UK and America, they have the money. They can come here and make a difference, but they don't. Many live in their comfortable life. They're, they're, they're in a trap. They're in a trap. The West has got them in a trap and they're comfortable to where now they don't want to leave and go back to their own country. Do you know they want to keep Africa like down? Like the West wants to keep Africa down. We have all the resources. We have everything on this land, the gold, the oil, the coal tank. No iPhone can work without, without Africa. 
And as long as they keep us poor, as long as they keep us divided, mentality poor, as long as they keep us divided, is as long as they gonna be good and we gonna be the way we are. Now, after watching this video, guys, you get to understand that this brother left to Africa, if you like Ghana, then the money that he came with was depleted and therefore he was not able to live the kind of life that he expected that he would live with his family. He ended up spending 12 months on a tent together with his family. Very painful, isn't it? Yeah, very, very painful. Just imagine living uh, an another continent just to come and suffer in a different, in another continent that you call your motherland. Very, very painful. So that's why many YouTubers uh, work around the clock, or at least arm you with some information that you need to equip yourself with when you want to come to Africa. And I think I've talked about uh, them in some of my videos. And I'm, going to, I'm still going to talk about some two, three uh, factors or uh, uh, things that you need to put in your pocket or in your, or in your bag before you make a decision of coming to Africa. And this is just information. Information is always key. And if you don't get this information or have this information with you, it's, auto it's automatical that when you come to Africa, you're going to suffer and you're going to regret it. Okay? Because remember, Africa is Africa. We are African people with the African mindset. Okay? And uh, this is how we believe that things should be done. It's how we believe that people should uh, socialize. So when you want to come to Africa, Remember, Africa does not have a job to give you. Africa is a place where Africa needs you to come and invest in Africa in order to create that job for you and for the people that are around you. So do not come to Africa and end up spending all your money without thinking of a business or an investment to enter into. Because money, if not uh, invested, it, it will get finished and once it get finished you'll never get it again because you, you don't have come to Africa to work you come to Africa to make that to create that job or to create that work Sasa. so if you want to, if you want to come to Africa come to Africa when you already have in mind a business that you want to come do come to Africa with a career that already you wanna go uh, work on. Come to Africa with already business in mind that when you land to Africa, you want to invest in this business, okay? Don't come to Africa that your pocket is full, you have a lot of money in your pocket, but you don't have a clue of how you're gonna, you're gonna spend your money. Because we as Africans, when we see an any person who has come from America or from, let me say, diaspora, okay, we will consider you as a foreigner, and therefore, all foreigners we believe they have money. So, we'll help you spend your money very well, and you'll regret it. So, come to Africa when ready you have got that business in mind, that kind of investment in mind, that I'm, gonna, I'm going to Africa, and this is what I'm going to do. Don't just come here and expect us that we're going to pamper you very well. No, we cannot do that, okay? That's why many YouTubers always take their time to show you these things so that when you come here in Africa, you don't come to regret later. African countries are good and African people are very good. That's why we always encourage that when you come to Africa, so socialize with the people, be free with the people, be ready to learn because you have a lot to learn in Africa because many things here will scare you, you'll start regretting why you've come to Africa, but with time you'll get to learn them and you'll get to understand them. So when you want to come to Africa, please I urge you, don't come to Africa to spend your money. Come to Africa to create 
a business or an investment or come to Africa already with a career and a job that you're gonna do with that career you understand it okay so so this, the second uh, topic that I want, I want us to speak about is about the discriminations that black people this this the grandchildren of Noah you know with the grandchildren of Noah because we believe that Noah was a black okay so all Africans are the grandchildren of Noah so why do you think that African people or the people of the African descent or black descent faces a lot of discriminations in in, in America and is and, and in some continents other than Africa so I came across some research that was done by the United Nations okay and that I'm going to read for you why are many Africans or Af the people of the black descent faces discrimination in the UK this was done by UN experts and uh, it is dated 27th July 2023 and uh, I'm going to read for you it's free to read in the social media because this is where we get our research uh, points and let me read for you the the title goes this way discrimination against people of african descent is structural institutional and systematic okay so it is all the the, the problems that all the black people are going through today are structured and are institutionalized and, and systematic so it's not something that is by accident it's something that the, it's already there it has a frame it's already framed it's already structured and therefore they're just referring on the next step that's why many african americans or the people of black descent faces a lot of discrimination when they go to America. This is an old mindset that people are still practicing. I think in this 21st century, this is something that should be gone, should be forgotten. Because it's now time that we are, we are realizing that uh, we are all equal. We are all equal before God and God made us equally. Let me adjust my light. Allow me to adjust my light because it is good. God, the Bible says that God made us equally before him and we are all equal and no one is greater than the other because we are all equal. Only God is great. And the Bible tells us also to respect our leaders, obey them. Okay, so let me continue with the topic of today. Racism in the United Kingdom of Great Britain is structural, institutional, and systematic. And UN experts say, warning that people of African descent in the country continue to encounter racial discrimination and erosion of their fundamental rights. They're trying to erase their culture. They're trying to make Afghan people or African descent forget themselves that's why we end up westernized okay you forget our culture you forget who we are you forget our names you forget where we came from we, for, we forget our history okay you ended up forgetting your even your language speaking their language practicing their culture you become westernized Okay, so this thing is structured and was structured long, long time ago. We have a serious concerns about impunity and the failures of the address disparities in the criminal justice system, deaths in police custody, joint enterprise convictions, the dehumanizing nature of the of the stop and strips as such. The expert documented that the trauma felt by people of African descent who are suffering racial discrimination and, and injustice in the UK. A woman of African descent we met during our visit lamented, will this ever end? Okay. They are actually going a very serious suffering. 
our African people who are in another continent, even those who are in Africa and are still going through slave system, we are still enslaved. That's why African countries are not free. That's not true. That's a false information that is being spread by the West media. There is no African country that is free. The only African countries that refused to be, to be colonized, like Ethiopia, are free. They do their things their own way because they are free. But these are the people who are colonized. We are living in a system that was given to us by our colonizing masters. Roads, airports, bridges are not owned by, the African, by those African countries. They are sponsored and owned by our colonizers. Even our lakes, imagine Lake Victoria, is not owned by the East African countries. Is not is owned by our colonizing masters. Okay, we have a lake, but we don't have a say over it. It is owned by some people somewhere that we don't understand. We don't know them. We just read read their stories from the books. Even Mount Kenya is not owned by the people of Kenya. Okay, from the. Uh, perspective of people of African descent, racism in the UK is structural, inst institutionalized, and systematic. The expert paint, uh, pointed out that for, for people of Africa descent, their experience with state and public institutions, the private sectors and societies was that it perpetuated racial hierarchies, rationalized acts targeting people of African descent have remained steadfast and the experience is similar across different parts of the UK. Welcoming emerging efforts towards reparations for the legacies of the trade and trafficking in enslaved Africans, the working groups encouraged all stakeholders, including the government, to do more to ensure the rehabilitations, restorations, and reconciliations of the state with its people. Streamlining ac accessible, independent, and effective complaint mechanisms to address racial, ensuring police ac accountability, fair trial granted for all people, not black, not white, all of them, and readiness to all persons affected by Widrash uh, scandals are, should be imperative. Okay. You know, now we understand that every, every suffering that black people are going through right today is not by accident or by chance. It's something that was structured, well documented, and African people should now be left to do their things their own way because they understand themselves. We understand our history. We understand where we came from. We understand where we are going to. Okay? Sometimes I do wonder, why is it that these African leaders have to go and bow to some human being somewhere for them to be given help? And Africa is that rich. Africa has got all their mineral resources. Africa is still in good frame. Why should we just go and bow down to another human being? somewhere for us to be given help what kind of help do we need i think it's time for all the african people to sit down and discuss we should now discuss guys figure on how we can be free figure out on how we can free ourselves from this slavery that is going on we are still being enslaved because our great great grandfathers were enslaved and today their grandchildren are still being enslaved. Okay? We are still being enslaved. This is called modern slavery. It's only that we are blinded and we cannot see that we are still going under slavery. But we are still under slavery. We need to wake up and refuse this. Refuse being enslaved again. Refuse being uh, discriminated again. Refuse being uh, disrespected and, dis and dehumanized again. 
because it is time for Africans to now realize that there was once colonization and it is gone okay we should not live by uh, always complaining that our colonizers did this did this and that's why we are poor there are countries that were colonized and they have made it and their gdp is in good structure they're doing even greater than the the people that colonized them why are we still sleeping why are we still living in in denial and and in regrets why should we just forget and carry press forward yes there was once slavery there was once a uh, colonization even though these people are still there their hands are still there they still uh, make decisions on some areas but imagine if africans can unite and speak one we can do away with this thing fully okay and start together new journey that will take us to victory okay we, sh we should not now live in regret we should not live in in blaming our colonizers every day because they were there they did their part okay they did their part and okay, all of them are dead they're not there they're not there and the people who are living today it's high time to forget about uh, slavery forget about uh, colonization because it was once there and we cannot do anything we cannot do something about it we cannot do anything about it okay it happened it happened so african and african americans the people of african descent i think it's high time for us to forge forward let's structure on what is good for us what can free us like some african countries are doing a good job they said enough is enough and we want to grow and in, imagine they're growing that they, they have refused to be neocolonized they have refused to be controlled they have refused to be enslaved and they have said that they are going to do their things their own way the west african countries niger burkina faso mali these people formed an alliance and they are doing unimaginable things but other african countries other african leaders do not want to realize this they still want to live in dependency they want to depend on the people that do not uh, want to see them growing okay so my prayer is that all the afghan people the afghan descent should realize that yes there was once slavery afghan countries was colonized but what next what next yes it happened you know someone cannot oppress you today oppress you tomorrow oppress you every day and you just keep quiet i'm trying to say that we need to make these things a topic every day we need to meet discuss these things every day and by us doing so we shall make a step okay because believe me there are some afghan people who do not even understand that there was once slavery in africa that there was once a colonization in africa they're just there so if we can discuss these things every now and then every day i think we can make a good step and we can make our ancestors proud yes they tried they tried their level best but maybe they were defeated that's why slave trade took place but what are we doing today in our uh, in our presence what are we doing as the people of africa in the absence of, of our ancestors what are we doing to please them and make them happy make them proud what are we doing are we still living in regrets are we still living in putting blame games on the people who died long ago okay so once you understand that the racism in uk and in america is something that was structured institutionalized what are we doing in our presence what are we doing guys so i leave you this with the question that what are we doing guys keep on asking yourself guys wherever you are wherever you're watching this video from ask yourself this this question what what am i doing in my presence to create a change 
okay what am i doing under my capacity to create a change guys okay now uh, i want answered in this video guys use the comment section guys to at least give me your comment or give me your opinion what you think about that okay should we live in putting blame games on on our colonizers or should we press forward and strike on how we can come out of this and make african continent great again okay so guys i love you so much and let me see you again in my next video